set forth his most worthy prayer, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his Let us read responsively the portion of Psalm 107 as found on page 4 in your bulletin. We'll read it by the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. He gathered them out of the lands. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to the sea, for they They were hungry and thirsty. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he put their feet on a straight path. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. For he satisfies the thirsty. <clears throat> Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider well the mercies of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Colossians 3. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, 
where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free, but Christ, who is all in all. The word of the Lord. This morning's second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul? You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The word of the Lord.
may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. This morning's lay reader sermon was written by the Reverend Ada Nagata, who is the associate rector at the Church of Our Savior in San Gabriel, California. And it's entitled, Rich Toward God. Right now in the world, there is lots of tension on the issues of income and wealth inequality. Now, I'm not an economist, and I'm certainly not a social scientist. So I won't get into these complicated aspects. However, the scripture readings we read this morning do offer us some reflections on a Christian perspective. Jesus has taught us the two great commandments that we say in every Eucharistic service. First is to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And the second is to love our neighbors as ourselves. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Jesus tells the two brothers who are in dispute of the family inheritance. He reminds them that life is not about owning or possessing things abundantly. We are to love God wholeheartedly and not to worship possessions as idols. To emphasize his point, Jesus tells the two brothers the parable of the rich man, whom he calls as a fool, the rich fool. This rich man had the blessings of abundant harvest. The produce was so abundant that he didn't have enough space to store it. With the abundance, what does the rich man do? The scripture tells us his only concerns are I and mine. In his whole thought process, it is only he himself that is in the center, and it shows definitely that he only loves himself. We have a few issues here. Greed, rich, and fool. In the epistle to Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5, Paul admonishes that put to death what is you, you is earthly. Greed is defined as a selfish and excessive desire for more of something, and in most cases we refer to money, than is actually needed. And this is from Merriam Webster's dictionary. Is desiring more of something than is, than is needed really bad? Don't we all want to have an abundance? Don't we all want to have a little leftover money to cushion ourselves in times of need? Isn't that why we contribute to pension funds, have 401ks, 401cs, all for the retirement time? I don't think that when one prepares for rainy days or stores up one's abundance, that causes Jesus to call all of us fools. Does he actually condemn wealth? It is selfish and excessive desire for oneself that becomes greed. It is the way we treat our abundance and our wealth that does matter to God. Jesus further says, so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich towards God these people end up with spiritual death. Who are those who are not rich towards God? Oftentimes we mention, when we mention rich, we think of money or wealth. In the Bible, there are at least 50 times that money, wealth, possession, or finances have been mentioned. They are mostly based on the basic commandments that says, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. When we love God, we are rich toward God. When we love our neighbors, we are rich toward God. 
It is because we show gratitude to God of the blessings bestowed to us. The rich man forgot about God, the one who gave him all his blessings, all the blessings that he has. God gives him the talents to grow the crops to receive produce abundantly. Whatever God wills will eventually be returned to God. Isn't that what he teaches us? In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 18, it says, I hated all my toil in which I toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. He can't take all the possessions with him, and of course, neither can we. Isn't this rich man a fool by hoarding all the produce and thinks he can enjoy it into eternity? He doesn't even realize that his last day on earth could be coming soon, and neither do we. This man's rich in produce can be rich toward God by simply showing God his gratitude. He can show God his gratitude by sharing his abundance with his neighbors who may not have such blessings but are struggling in their own lives. He forgets he should love God with his whole heart, whole mind, whole spirit, and whole strength. He forgets he should love his neighbors as himself. Isn't this one of the issues of the inequality of income and wealth of the contemporary world? The rich hoard the abundance without showing their gratitude to the creators. Not only do they love their neighbors, not only do they not love their neighbors by not helping them out, but they also oppress them so it be able to hoard more wealth. Who doesn't want to be rich? Who doesn't want to be in that 1%? Isn't that why we go to the big colleges and schools to study hard and work hard and be successful? However, when we get rich, will we be the rich fool or will we be rich toward God? The following items have been listed in cyberspace and is something that captures what Jesus says in the gospel. And I'd like to share part of it with you in conclusion. These are things that God won't ask on that day. God won't ask what kind of car you drove. God will simply ask, how many people did you give a lift to that didn't have transportation? God won't ask the square footage of your house, but he will ask how many people you have welcomed into your home. God won't ask about your clothes you have. God will ask how many you helped to clothe. God won't ask what your highest salary was, but God will simply ask if you compromised your integrity to obtain it. God won't ask what your job title was. He will simply ask whether you performed your job to the best of your ability. God won't ask how many friends you had. God will simply ask how many people to whom you made sure you were a friend. God won't ask what neighborhood you lived in, but God will ask how you treated and behaved with your neighbors. Amen.
Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve thy sick servants, and give thy power of healing to those who minister to their need, that those who we remember at this time, Marion Sapert, Bob Love, Jimmy Trotter, Karen Ferguson, Micheline Martin, Lindsey Hicks, Don and Nancy Ward, Mary Flora Sigmund, Ezra Robertson, Dan Cardinal, Jody Underwood, Betty Sigmund, Jean Horsley, Peter Potter, Nancy Scott, Reed Apple, Bob Campbell, Hazel Post, Chrissy Constable Badgett, Jody Thompson, Barbara Greer, Gary Strader, Larry Turner, Joan Zadansky, Brenda Denson, Joyce McCloskey, Doc Kernighow, Daryl Washburn, Judy White, Naomi Gullickson, Stephanie Robertson, Caleb McKay, that they may deliver from their distress, and any others who you wish to remember at this time. Those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in thy loving care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we remember this day before thee thy faithful servants, Micheline Martin and Quinn Moore. And we pray that having opened to them the gates of larger life, thou wilt receive them more and more into thy joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served thee in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Almighty God, we commend your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them. And grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. And this day especially we pray for Randy Williams, Ethan Rogers, Heather Meyer Galana, Jericho Galana, Bo and Patty Buffet, Spencer and Lynette Wilson, Ralph Lee Clayton, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepherd, Wesley Welch, Lathrop Smith IV, Chris Miles, Robert Murray, Caleb Butt, Hunter Morrell, James Perry. Jonathan Romero, Claire Frazier, and Hannah Drew, and Nick Tremonti. Lord, protect them from harm and shield them from danger. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants. Susan Turner, Jerry Highsmith IV, Father Rick Miles, Maya Robertson, Michael Pugh, Kristen Farmer, and Caitlin Miles Klein, Lord, we thank you. As they begin another year of their lives, grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen them their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, who follow the care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth. We humbly beseech thee graciously to behold and bless those whom we love, now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to thee, may be bound together by thy love and communion of the Holy Spirit, and in the fellowship of all thy saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. 